party. We are doing a celebration video today, a 25K Q&A. As a matter of fact, as of today, I'm already at 34,000 subscribers because of you, my community. I have reached some amazing milestones and I'm so proud and happy to share with you today. Last week, I reached out to see if you had any questions that you might want me to answer as far as money and budgeting and business and even a little personal information. Some of them are a little personal and there's one question that I've been avoiding that I've been asked a lot about. I'm going to get to that today. So since we're celebrating today, you could have champagne. I did think about it, but I'm not really a champagne kind of person. I'd rather have something warm. So I made a cup of tea. Grab yourself a beverage and let's get straight to the questions. The first set of questions are the frugal living and money tips. The first question here is, how am I supposed to save for an emergency fund if I'm on a fixed income? This person only gets Social Security, and this is going to be a really tough one. If you're able to have a side hustle and you can make some extra money someplace, somewhere in there, you can use that money as an emergency fund or to feed your emergency fund. If you feel like you've cut back as much as you possibly can and there's no place else to cut back, you might want to consider finding some help financially, especially if you are in disability, social security, or a retired person. There are so many different resources for you to get lower costs on just about everything. SNAP benefits would help, even if it's only $50 a month. Anything like HEAP, which is Heat and Energy Assistance Program, or SNAP benefits, which will help you with food. Senior citizens will also give you a lower rate on de meal deliveries. Now, some people say they're unhealthy. Some people say that they're not the best food in their area. In our county, they're very good. My mother-in-law lives in a different county. The food is also very good. She gets that at a lower discounted rate. The fact of the matter is, even though it might not be the best tasting food all the time or the most healthy food, it is going to help you in your grocery budget to reduce that in order to put some money aside for other things like an emergency fund. If you can get help with other things out there, a quick Google search for your state or your county might offer some assistance. Things like cutting back on some other things like cable TV might be helpful too. If you're paying for cable TV, I know one woman who gets subsidized for housing. She's paying the same amount for her housing as she is for cable. That's a red flag right there. It's time to cut out cable for sure. The next question is, do you have any suggestions on a side hustle when you're already working full time? This is a great question, and it really is dependent on what you love to do and what you're good at. If you love to clean, a side hustle on Saturday mornings, cleaning somebody's place for a hundred bucks a week, is going to really help that extra $400 a month is really going to help you meet your financial goals. It is so dependent on what you're good at and what you like to do. If your full-time job is a teacher, you've got a great opportunity to do some tutoring after school. If your full-time job is administrative assistant or accounts receivable, that means you know a little bit about bookkeeping. That might be an excellent job for you too. Oh, this question is probably one of my favorites. How do you stay motivated to keep being frugal? I don't really have a huge problem with that because it's ingrained in me. Frugal runs in my blood. But reading books, watching videos, going on Facebook and joining frugal Facebook groups where everybody's being frugal, surrounding yourself with like-minded people, all of those things will help you stay motivated to continue being frugal until it just becomes second nature. It just is who you are. 
creating new behaviors takes practice and surrounding yourself and allowing yourself to every evening finding a YouTube video or every evening while you're watching TV, going onto Facebook, following people on Instagram or other social media platforms, going into Pinterest, looking for frugal ways, all of those things will help you become frugal until it just becomes a habit. This is also a fun one. How do you remain frugal and on budget if your husband is a spender? Now, I'm a saver. He's a spender, although after 30-ish years we've been together, I'm noticing he's picking up some of my frugal habits, finally. Sometimes when partners or spouses start on this journey of becoming debt-free, you tend to have a little bit of resentment going on if you are not on the same page. My advice for that is to make sure that there's some fun money available. Money that's available for each person, depending on how much you want to spend or how much debt you want to get rid of, will be dependent on the fun money amount. It could be $25 a week. It could be $25 a month. And that money is yours or your partner's or spouse's to do whatever they want with. There's no checking in. There's no, honey, I want to spend this money. There's nothing. They just get to spend it all willy-nilly on whatever it is they want to spend it on. That way there's no resentment there for that, especially if you have the same goals. If you both really want to be debt-free or if you both really want to start saving more for retirement or help your kids with college, whatever your goals are, there really needs to be a meeting of the minds, a sit down and a decision making process in order to decide what's going to happen with your money. And here's another one. How do you manage your household budget if your husband keeps spending all the money? I would suggest this. I would suggest opening up a household budget account. If you're the one who's paying the bills, like I do in my house, then that debit card checking account will be just your money to manage the household budget. The money will come out of that for your mortgage, rent, electric, propane, whatever it might be, will come out of that account only. Your husband may have his own account Maybe that's his account for his fun money. He gets to destroy that if he wishes. But the account for the household, so that money doesn't get spent and you're out of luck when it comes to paying your housing, that's for that only. Next question. I'm working on one of my debts. Should I continue paying on that debt or should I save two? This is such a big question. It really does depend on a lot of other factors. So if you're working really hard to get out of debt, I would keep going with that. I would I would throw everything I possibly could at that debt. As long as you have a little bit of an emergency fund. Many gurus will suggest a $1,000 starter emergency fund. Now, with the way the economy is, and it dependent on if you rent or own, if you're in charge of the things around your house that break, if you have an older car, all of those things will be dependent on how much your starter emergency fund is. I believe in having a starter emergency fund first before you attack your debt because if something happens, you will derail your debt payoff journey. If you have to stop what you're doing, pull out those credit cards and pay for an emergency fund, pay for a broken muffler on your car. Having that money set aside will help you hyper focus, hyper focus on your debt payoff. So to answer this question on whether you should continue on the debt free journey that you're on or save, would have to say it depends on where you are. If it were me, I would have a little bit of a starter emergency fund first before I even started paying off debt and then be hyper-focused and diligent in paying off that debt. The next question has to do with pets. How much should I budget for one dog and three cats? 
I get an awful lot of questions about pets and I think it's really time that I do a video on how to save money on pets. If you're interested in that video, let me know in the comments. I'll feel you out a little bit and maybe make one of those videos if it's needed. My suggestion would be to go back through the months and figure out how much money you have been spending on your pets. I know this is going to be a little bit of a challenge because many of us get our cat litter and our dog food at Walmart when we get our groceries at the same time. But if you know how much money you're spending on dog food and kitty litter, then you can make a decent guesstimate on how much you should be spending on all of those things each month. And you also have to take into consideration how often you take them to the vets. Take that yearly amount that you spend on vets and divide it by 12 and save a little bit of money, that amount of money, each month in a separate savings account just for pets. That way you know that that money is there because you know they're gonna to need to go to the vet. You have that money set aside for that purpose. Next question, how do I start over financially after divorce while working full time? Pretend that you just got out of college and you've landed your first full time job. You have debts that you have to pay off. You're going to have to start paying on your student loan any minute now. So you have to live on a bare bones budget. This means really analyzing where you're spending your money and what you're spending your money on. Can you afford your rent or your mortgage? Is it possible for you to find a cheaper place to live? Are you spending too much on a car payment? How is your debt? Do you need to build that starter emergency fund so you can attack that debt? Where can you cut back? Are you living above your means? Think of this as a brand new opportunity to reinvent yourself and to take care of your money a little bit better. This is a question I get asked a lot. How do I budget my money if I don't have any? You may find that you have more than you think you do after creating a budget. Giving every penny a name on a line in your budget so you have control over your money instead of your money having control over you may be the best thing that you could possibly do for your life. Knowing is so much better than not knowing. Grab the free budget planner in the link down below in the description to get started on your budget. Just give it a try. Now remember, it's going to take you at least one month to three months to maybe even six months if you're a slow learner like me to get going on this budget and to get it just right. So those are the money questions. Those are the frugal living and the budgeting questions that I have gotten from my community. Let's start on the few questions that I have gotten about my business. My first question is where does frozen pennies come from? The name frozen pennies comes from six years ago when my niece was doing a no spend challenge. If you don't know what a no spend challenge is, I'm gonna leave a link in the iCard above about a no spend challenge as well as in the description below. She came over on Christmas and said that she had done a no spend challenge for the entire year. She had done it all year long and she took all of the money that she was normally spending on frivolous things and put it into a savings account. So I thought to myself, that would be so fun. I could totally do that. I could do a year no spend challenge. How much fun would that be? And my youngest son said, hey mom, why don't you blog about it? So that's where it started. And when I was looking for a name for the blog, I thought spending freeze frozen pennies. Aha, uh -huh, that's the name. That was in January of 2018 and it kind of transformed into this amazing business that I didn't even know I could do. I didn't even know you could create a business from a blog until I got the ball rolling. Then, about a year or so ago, I started YouTube. It's been such an amazing experience for me. I have grown so attached and emotionally attached to my community and that has been my primary focus. One of the questions that I've gotten is what is my favorite part of being a YouTuber? It's the community. 
I love chatting with you guys. I love that you are on my email list and you're emailing me back and you're giving me testimonials and you're telling me how much I've helped you. I love helping. I have a teacher's heart, so helping you be frugal, saving money and getting out of debt and reaching your financial goals is really my calling. I truly believe that this is why I'm here. I do have something super exciting coming up for 2024 and I encourage you to grab this freebie and get on my list so you guys can be the first to find out what I have in store for the start of 2024. And my last question for the whole business part, YouTube part is what's my best advice that I could give to someone who wants to start a YouTube channel. And I have a couple of pieces of advice. First is it's really all about the thumbnail and title. So they call it the packaging. You could have the very best idea for a video, but if people aren't attracted to the thumbnail and the title, they're not gonna click. They're never gonna see that video. So the number one piece of advice is learn everything that you can watch all of the videos on packaging and learn how to market and perfect the packaging first. My second piece of advice is just start. Everybody's gonna suck at the beginning. If you look back on my first five or six or 10 or 12 videos, you're gonna be like, whoa, this girl stinks. And it's true, and I'm okay with that. And sometimes even today, I just don't put out the best videos. It happens. But if you don't start, then you'll never get better. And my third piece of advice is you have to start with something that you're truly passionate about. If you don't love it, you're going to burn out so fast, you're going to get bored and you're going to stop. You can't stop, you have to keep going. In order to see growth, you have to continually keep going. Be consistent and keep moving on. But that's not gonna happen unless you're super passionate about what you're talking about. Okay, the last category is the personal stuff. A little bit about me, a little bit about my family, and my biggest question that I tend to get often and I avoid. Are my children frugal like me or do they complain all the time? Yes and yes. So I've always been frugal and my boys have been raised to know this about me. I never said we don't have the money. I always said it's not in the budget this week. So if they wanted something in particular at the grocery store, if I had the money in the budget for that particular thing, they knew I did. If I didn't, they also knew it's not in the budget this week. I'll put it on the list for next week. They've also always had their own money. So they knew that if they wanted something special, they had to save their money from birthdays or Christmas or holidays they had to save their money for that particular thing. Many times they didn't just get something because they felt they needed to. I wanted to make sure that they didn't grow up with that self entitlement thing. A funny story, when my oldest son got married, the first Valentine's Day of their married life, I bought them total money makeover. Now my oldest, he is not a big reader, but he read that book twice and they really have a good money mindset. I mean, they're doing everything right. Super proud of them as a young family. I think they've nailed it. Do my kids still live with me? Yes. Some of you may already know that I have a special needs son. He's 25, he's still living here. We are going through a transition with him within the next couple of years. Well, he will be living in a group setting. He will move out of our house because it's a natural transition for young men to move out of their house into someplace else, whether it be an apartment with friends or a spouse or a partner. So for him, we would like to allow that natural transgression of moving out into a group setting with people who have the similar interests and are of his age. My youngest son is still here. He is 22. He works, has a job, but really doesn't have any interest in moving out. Um, I'm not really sure when that's gonna happen, honestly. Soon, I'm sure it'll be soon. 
I'm, I'm sure, right? I mean, he's not going to live here forever, right? And of course, my oldest son is married with his own kids. And lastly, what is my worst money fear? My worst money fear, totally vulnerable here, being completely honest with you, laying it all out on the table. My husband is 12 and a half years older than I am. My worst money fear is that something's going to happen to him and I'm going to be left without money. That's it. That's my worst money fear. That's my worst fear, I think, in life is, is being without him. And so I put a lot of thought into this. I put a lot of thought into the what ifs. I'm a planner. It's in my heart. My brain operates on a plan. I have lists. I have plans all of the time. So I have put systems into place if, heaven forbid, anything happens to him. I mean, we know that statistically women live longer than men. All of those stat statistics are, are real things. But my systems that I have had to put into place over these last few years in order for him to feel comfortable in retirement are ways that we could be comfortable financially. I know that we will be okay. All right, that's it. That's the 25K Q&A. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. This has been so much fun, and I truly appreciate you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.